So we're putting on the cam followers now. The first one back there was a real bear because all the lines and stuff in the way. I didn't and realize none of these had any lock washers on them. And I wasn't able to reach back there to help him hold it and hold the gasket in place because, you know, trying to get it in the gasket keeps shifting. And yeah, it, the first one was a bear, but second one, not too bad. So, when I cleaned these bolts up, I didn't realize there was no block washers on them. And I went to go put them on, and well, now they're not painted, but I kind of boogered this up, cleaned up the backside. So we'll just wipe all these down when we're done. And I guess we'll give it one more coat. I'll get this one ready to go. So what we're doing is wiping it down one last time before we put it together. And uh, we're putting a little bit of lube on that cam since it's been sitting here with no oil on it forever. <clears throat> so we're just going to put a little bit of Looper plate 105 on it. And that's right where the cam followers are going to hit, right in that area. I measured out our old um, gaskets that were on here, the thickness of them, and the new gaskets. It only took two of them to get to that thickness, so that was good. Um, so now we'll clean up the last one. As you can imagine, if the gaskets make a difference in timing, the torque certainly can too. So the first one is 15, so I'll start in the center, work my way out, and go up here to this one. It's not exactly simple to do one-handed. I didn't look at the, at the sequence, it's just always, when I torque, I torque on the outside and work my way in. flex head torque wrench so it's not exactly easy okay now the next one's 35 so we'll turn this up do the same thing over I went ahead and put the starter in I cleaned everything up real good and put an RCs on the nose of it and on the bolts it shouldn't get stuck in there I fixed that ground that was bad broken never hooked up whatever never hooked up that's what it was replace that oil line we got a new oil pressure line coming up and uh, this ground was on here from the starter to the block, but it goes up to the cam cover. That's where it was. It was actually on this one, I think. But uh, I don't think that's a very good ground, but I guess we'll just have to work with it. Well, you also uh, fixed the speedometer, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a speedometer cable. Uh, I was able to find a guy that makes them, and uh, I ordered it by... Uh, what the head was, what the speedometer unit on the transmission, what that nut size was, thread pitch, and then what type of uh, drive it had inside it. And a couple days later, here it was. I have to get a grommet. It came with a grommet, but it's way too big, so I have to get a uh, another grommet to go in there. But I think that's it. We need to go get some parts. I just got my UPS stuff, and there was this envelope in here. I I didn't know what it was, and I saw the things, and what the heck, man? Oh my god. <laughs> That's cool. Holy crap, look at that. Keychains. Holy crap. There's no note. I know it's from SH2. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's, that's nice. so nice. They're such good people. Is this pizza ice phone? Is this pizza ice phone? That is so cool. God, that people are something else. Thank you guys. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, that's really cool. That's incredible. So we got all all the cover protected film up. My wife's gonna go clean them up now, but what do you think? Right nice. There.
put that one right there. Goof off takes it right off. Yeah. Don't scratch it. And there's so. two SH2 keychains. And then there's a couple of uh, the old laid back ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a couple of these. They came on a truck I bought. And um, I've had several backhoes over the years. And we took these off the truck that I had. And I don't remember if it was me or my son, but we took them and we stuck them on my on my backhoe. And it went from one backhoe to the next to the next. And after we put these on here, we affectionately called my backhoe the dirty hoe. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fitting. It really was. So anyways, my wife's going to clean these up. These people are just too good to us, you know. I, I don't know why they decided to send that, but I love it. It's fantastic. I can't wait to meet them. They're going to be at uh, Matt's this year again so we're gonna stop and meet him down there so we got our new bushing for inside the housing and the bushing has an oil slot that needs to be lined up you'll see this was oil feed right here so we need to make sure that this is cleaned exceptionally well and then we're gonna drive this in and to drive it in I'm just gonna use this aluminum disc we have this is just a piece of soft aluminum. It's softer than what this is. And we'll drive it in like that because I don't have the proper tool. But I think this will work. And I got that in. So the next thing I have to do is take the mirror and look at my oil line. Make sure we're lined up. Which I'm not really able to tell in there. But I'll get a light, double check, make sure we're good. If we are, which I think we are. We'll clean up this a little bit more here and get our seal driven in. All right, our seal's in. Now we're ready to start with the accessory drive. Um, I'm gonna press the other one apart. I gotta press the gear off, put it on a new shaft, press it together. I wanna clean this up a little bit in here and then clean up my sealing surface again. And then when we set this in here, we have to time the accessory drive with the cam gear. You see this yellow mark we've made here? There's a plug right there that'll give us a sight line view to the timing marks on the cam. So what we're trying to achieve is we need to time the accessory drive so that it's in the right timing. So when we put the pulley on, we can use this indicator and the marks on the pulley, A, B, and C, which are equally spaced around here. So this 365 degree of turn, these are equally spaced 120 one degrees apart maybe something like that and what we're doing here is that is telling us where a will tell us where two cylinders are b will tell us where two different cylinders are and three will tell us where two the last two cylinders are so we can do our overhead adjustment so that there's no those valves are not being opened at that time those valves or those injectors do not have any cam tension from the push tubes and the rockers so this must be in time so we got to take that plug out back here and then we got to get our accessory drive ready to go in here so there's an oil feed right here it comes out of the front cover comes into here and goes up here to feed the bushing that's in here to keep it oiled and the thrust washer so we got to make sure that is not obstructing you have the gasket on correct now this is an aftermarket gasket and it doesn't fit real well so I always have to take this and trim the extra gasket material. Otherwise it tries to bind up and it doesn't seal well. You can see how the relief is, is machined in here. This is what it's stopping against right here. So once we get down into this area, it'll be fine. We don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, now it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do, because this is my timing marks, right there there's two zeros right there so we're gonna make this line here go into 
where we have the yellow paint on here. So when it slides in, it will slide up to mesh with our gear, hopefully at the right spot. It usually takes a time or two to get it in. I've already got the bushing in, of course. I'll put a little bit of lube on there, just a little bit of light oil, and then we'll put it together. Okay, you might be able to see that right there. It'll focus. There we go. Right in there with our red. I know it's hard to see, but we're there. So I've rechecked the torque on this oiling bolt. So just a little bit of information. We get oil pressure coming up through the cover into this port right here, this, ga this uh, passage, and it comes into that bushing. And it oils that shaft at the same time there's a hole in the shaft and it's drilled. So that shaft sends oil out here to this oiling plug. That has a hole in it because there's a sleeve that goes over top of this and over top of the air compressor so it lubricates that sleeve so then the oil in here has to have a way to get back to the to the crankcase and so does the oil from the compressor the oil gets the compressor gets fed oil through this chamber right here this passage it comes through here into the compressor and the return oil is shared here with this accessory drive oil return so it comes through here and you see it's sloped down on an angle and it returns to the crank to the front cover and then back to the oil pan so we got to make sure we put this together this is very clean and there's no obstructions anywhere because we don't want any trouble with our uh, air compressor so that's been checked I want to get before I forget I want to get the timing sight hole here I want to get the plug back in here real quick get it cleaned up and get the plug in that is actually a 5 16th square drive. I didn't have one. I used to have a full set of uh, uh, plug square drive externals and a snap-on set, and I have no idea what happened to it, so I just took a extension, just sacrificed an extension, old cheapy. I don't even know what brand that is. doesn't matter. I just ground it down to fit. works just fine. So I used a little high-tech spray on the back of the gasket, and then uh, line it up good. Use bolts as, you know, reference here. And uh, push it down in real good. Because you can see here's the, here's the oil supply. And it's real small. And then, of course, the drain's here. But if you flip this gasket the wrong way, then this is just about uh, covered. It, it doesn't lay out right. You would think it does, but it doesn't. That whole half covers it. So I figure if I glue it on with some high tech. Let it set up when I go to put the compressor on there's less chance of it getting messed up or falling off and then getting put on the wrong way so this is our new accessory drive pulley and as you can see I've marked it a B and C here and those correspond with the, the markings right here which are very hard to read so I put a little red mark on the back where the notch is it's actually kind of ground into it and these are evenly spaced here and this is how you run your overhead when you're using the, uh, the ABC outer base circle method. It also has this mark here, um, but we're not going to use that timing mark for doing overhead. So you can see it comes with a new wear sleeve on it from the factory. Before we can put the accessory drive pulley on, we got to put the locating pin keyway in the shaft. And you can see those little things there those are basically uh, it's kind of like a chisel and it's made a raised area so when that raised area goes down into the shaft and you tap it down which we'll have to tap it down with a, a brass hammer or something what it's doing is it's going to keep that pin from moving up and down as this thing rotates because if it moved up and down either the pin would wear the shaft would wear and the uh, pulley could wear so the idea is to get it down in there friction fit so it can't move up and down Cummins wants you to put this on here dry they this is a different type of seal I've never seen this used in any other any other um, 
application than right here this type of material it's not a rubber seal it's a pretty hard stiff seal and they want this to go on dry they want you to put a little luber plate on the shaft here um, before you press it on so let me get this tapped in and then we'll grab our tool because we're going to use a tool to press this on a lot of guys will you know take a hammer and tap on the front i don't want to do that i'd rather use the proper tool it screws on the end of the shaft and drives it on presses it so this is a better view of what we're doing here this is the arbor we're going to screw it on the end of the shaft and the purpose of doing this not using the threads and a nut to pull this on is because you can destroy the threads real easily on the shaft this way what you're doing is you're pulling on the threads you're running these threads in and not on the shaft so we can get this in get that lined up again this part and on here I'll put a link in the description if you need this tool um, where to get it okay and then there's a hex drive in the end of it so you could hold the shaft and then run this in and tighten it and press it on so let me get set up for that. So I put a little lube on the threads. And now all you have to do is just press it in. And usually there's enough compression in the motor to hold it still to where you don't have to use that holder. You usually end up using that to take it back off because it'll get kind of bound up. But all we have to do is slow and easy, just run her in. I don't use it very often, obviously, but... I think it's worthwhile to have because we don't want to be pulling on the threads on the accessory drive shaft with a nut because you take a, the risk of damaging that. I don't want to do that, so we'll run this in until it bottoms out, and I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, so we're in all the way. The tool will the tool will stop because the pulley is bottoming out on the shaft of the accessory drive. There's a shelf machined into the shaft so this is going to go up against it and then it's going to stop when driving that pulley on it's coming on this shaft and then it's stopping up against this shoulder as you can see right here so that's when you know it's bottomed out all the way now the next thing we'll have to do is get all of this back apart get this out of here so all we have to do is just break it loose where it was bottomed out and then just unscrew this washer fell right there that washer is just a spacer go in here and give this uh, thing something to turn on without grinding into your pulley now that's in all the way we have to prevent that keyway from letting oil come out because that shaft is going to have oil in it and on it i don't have the seal that goes in there there's a little sealing wedge so i just use a little rtv i ordered it in the kit but the cummins dealer i ordered the, the accessory drive bushing kit from didn't order the major they ordered the minor and then the minor doesn't come with that so they get they sold me the seal and the bushing for in here uh, separately so we didn't get that and I didn't even think about it so I'm gonna use a little RTV in there I'll push it in real good and that'll be just fine all right hold it tight I am trying. Hold on. Okay. It's tight. Now this is torqued in. We can put the outside belt drive on. That is for the two V belts. And it's very important you get the right length of bolts. I measured these and I think about an inch and three eighths of thread um, going total underneath the head of the bolt is what I need. 
The old ones, um, they were mismatched, so I think I'm just going to replace them. All right, I think we're all good. Double check. Double check everything. Okay, everything seems to be pretty good. Next thing we do would be roll the engine over and make sure that our, our pulley is uh, parallel to this pulley, making sure that it's seated all the way. So, that being said, we're done. One thing I didn't mention in this was their spec about uh, where the gears mesh is about ten thousandths, I believe. But when you put it in there, you can tell, you know, if you have excessive play or anything going forward and back. We don't have anything out of spec here. That's, that's just fine. And it feels good this way. And our belts are now lining up, which is good. I have two more belts coming. We're going to pick them up in the morning. He didn't want me to put two belts on, but here's the problem with that. If you put one belt on this thing, that belt has to be tighter in order to keep that pulley from spinning, the belt spinning uh, when the fan's running. So if you run two belts, it takes less pressure on the actual accessory drive pulling that way so the belts don't slip. So we're going to go ahead and replace them both, then we can set the belts up correctly. So now you can see the belts are laying in here flat. They're nice and straight. They're not uh, um, walking in and out like it was. So this is all back together. Fly, uh, fans back in. Fan shrouds back in. Got all new bolts in here. So that's ready to go. We're still waiting on parts for the original accessory drive. Uh, so once we get those, we'll put it all back together. But I want to keep moving forward. We're going to put the air compressor in. Cummins wants... You to put the accessory drive in A and then the timing marks on the compressor at 10 o'clock as, as if you're looking at the part of the compressor that's going to be going into here. They want that timing mark at 10 o'clock. Well, the problem is Bendix doesn't do a very good job of telling me what is an actual timing mark here. Cummins says the timing marks on the, the air compressor shaft. Well, we have a shaft, we have a gear. We have a keyway, we have three slots. I'm not really sure if it matters for one. I mean, I wouldn't think they'd put it in the book if it didn't matter. Well, everything is bolted up on the air compressor and hooked up for except for the the governor line coming back here, the signal line. I haven't hooked that up because I got to this point and I realized there's a problem. This is the original coolant tube from the original compressor and that coolant tube would have went right in the center of the head and down lower, as you can see, and this one doesn't fit. And if I cut this off, it's still going to be too long this way. I'd have to cut it off, and the angle's wrong because it wouldn't seal down there because the angle would be way too steep. So I'm either going to have to take compressor off and get the correct compressor, or I can take these two fittings out and go to the... Uh, hydraulic shop and see if they have a coolant compatible hose that we could uh, make a hose to go like this maybe do this one on a 45 let it come over like this and then sweep in or something like that I don't know um, I don't really want to go any farther until I got that ironed out because if I got to take it off I'm going to do it before I put the um, fuel pump on I got the gasket on here I use high tech spray on the back of a gasket and I stick it to it to the compressor so I don't have to worry about it getting messed up my spider drive fell out yep there's my new spider drive way down there it fell out I was uh, I was rolling this thing over making sure my bolts weren't touching on that crank pulley I, for, I had forgotten to do that but um, yeah I think we're gonna stop here I just started making progress some good progress anyways but <clears throat> you know it is what it is when I hooked up this top coolant pipe, these were the last two things I was doing. I was like, hmm, this isn't right. Something's not right. 
it's unfortunate, but it's the nature of the beast. So we'll stop here. We'll pick it up next time. We have a solution here, and uh, we'll go on from there. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you on the next one.